Hi everybody, happy Saturday. Hope everybody's doing good. Today I'm going to be reading to you from um, a blog from October of 2018 and it is entitled One Light in the Line of Faith. God strung together a couple of interesting thoughts and situations last week for me that I've wanted to share but wasn't sure how to connect all of it in a way that makes sense. Then at church yesterday, in our Difference of One series, our pastor talked about three different people in the Bible whose lives might have turned out differently if someone else had not spoken up for them or taken a stand when they saw something that needed to be done. The Difference of One. Anyone who has read any of my previous blogs knows that I feel strongly about allowing God to shine his bright light into my life <clears throat> and in turn shine his light in the darkness. I've only been given one light in this life and it feels so small, so ineffective. But God showed me last week and again yesterday morning how he can use one person to change the course of history. So I'm just going to write out the thoughts that God placed on my heart last week and trust him to do what he does best, what only he can do. <clears throat> October 24th, 2018, Wednesday Journal. I'm thinking about the daily bread reading, devotional reading from Monday, October 22nd, 2018, Treasure and a Pumpkin. The scripture reading was 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 18. This scripture reading contains two very significant set of verses for me, but I have never read them in context with one another. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 7 through 9 has been have been my life verses for 15 plus years because of the many years of depression I've weathered. And 2 Corinthians 4 verses 16 through 18 have been a huge encouragement to me in my lowest of valleys. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 7 through 9 say this, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Second Corinthians four verses 16 through 18 say, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. <clears throat> I have no idea why I never connected these two passages, but I've always read them on their own, separate from each other. 2 Corinthians 4, 7-9 through 9 has always represented perseverance and overcoming struggles, specifically depression for me. I've also used these verses to encourage many other people in their struggles. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 gives me hope that there's purpose in the pain, that the struggles making me feel hard pressed on every side, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down are not all there is, are not all there is in store for me. It's a reminder to keep my eyes on God, not my troubles, to look beyond the horizon to hope for what's to come despite the despite the darkness I was walking in. Looking back on how I previously handled my depression, I think, no, I know that I let the voice of shame prevent me from fully experiencing the hope attached to all of these verses. It felt unattainable to me that I would never experience anything more than a lifetime of depression, and if I could just keep my white knuckle grip on the reins of my life to hold it all together, I could make it through somehow until God says, my time is up. I see now that was an exhausting way to live. That's like having a jar busted into 1,000 pieces and trying with my own two hands to piece it all back together and hold all of the pieces in place perfectly. Impossible. God is also reminding me that it's not a coincidence that these very same verses were the scripture reading for Monday, 1022, on a day when I woke up with despair 
hanging over me, just waiting to settle down upon my shoulders, and evil trying to pull me towards depression. These verses reminded me that hope and freedom are attainable for me, that I can choose what I'm pulled towards, and I didn't want it to be despair and depression. I think that speaks somewhat to the six verses that connect verses 7 through 9 and verses 16 through 18. Verse 10 says, We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. In light of the struggles that would cause you to feel hard-pressed, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down, you carry with you Jesus' death and all that represents. Forgiveness of sin, freedom from shame, surrender so that Jesus' life can be revealed, victory over death, power to overcome evil, light shining in the darkness. <clears throat> Verse 11 says, For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. <clears throat> Since these verses are being written by Paul to the early followers of Jesus in Corinth, I'm fairly certain he meant physical death because they were so heavily persecuted. But when I read this, I think of death in a spiritual sense. If I am made alive in Jesus, then I need to be willing to surrender the old ways, the old thinking, the old me, and let those die so Jesus' life can be revealed in me. Verse 12 says, So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. This verse had me a little stumped as I was pondering how it fits in with all the other verses. Up until this verse, everything has been we, us, our, and ourselves, which I had been reading as Paul and all believers. But if death is at work in us, but life is at work in you, what's the distinction? I'm assuming the you is the Corinthians reading this letter, but based on everything Paul said prior to verse 12, why wouldn't the Corinthians be included in carrying Jesus' death in their bodies so that his life can be revealed in them also? Maybe Paul is saying he and the leaders of the early church are carrying Jesus' death around in them and being given over to the death so that Jesus' life can be revealed in all who follow behind them. Verses 13 through 15 say, It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Even though they are hard-pressed on every side, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down, they are showing that they won't be stopped because God's all-surpassing power is at work in them. And even if they are killed, it will only serve to reveal more of Jesus. More and more people will come to know Jesus and his grace, so they don't lose heart. The persecution and outward destruction are, are only light and momentary troubles that don't compare to the eternal glory awaiting them. They fix their eyes on what is unseen. God is all-surpassing power, the grace spreading to more and more people, the eternal glory and not on what is seen, persecution, beatings, imprisonment, ridicule, mocking. What is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What does all this mean for me? The sacrifices made by Paul and the persecution he endured to share Jesus' grace with more and more people didn't just benefit the people of Corinth. It benefits me. Where would I be today without these written truths and without the word having spread from person to person, city to city, country to country, generation to generation? What will it be like in heaven if we can trace the line all the way back to how each person heard about Jesus? I can't even hardly wrap my mind around it, but I also, but I want it, but I want to also be able to say, I believed, therefore I have spoken. I want Jesus' life to be revealed in me, to show off the all-surpassing power of God. I want to stand in the line of people who heard about Jesus because of me, something I said, something I wrote. It would only be because of God's power at work in me and through me. That is very humbling and awe-inspiring, a very humbling and awe-inspiring visual to try to comprehend. My own line of faith goes back to my parents and my grandparents and their parents. And where does it go from there? 
How far back would we be able to trace that line of faith and where would it end? The 12 disciples? Jesus? These are the crazy places my mind goes when I'm digging deep into scripture. And that was all um, a journal from October 24th, 2018, Wednesday. And then this is the next day's journal, October 25th, 2018, Thursday. I reconnected with an old coworker from Alaska today. We haven't spoken in over four years and God intervened to use my blogs to speak to her just when she needed it. She shared one of my previous blogs and when I read her words about my blog, I was speechless. This is what she said. God put it on my heart this morning to look up an old coworker. I kept putting it off thinking, why Lord, why after almost four years would you put her on my heart so strong out of nowhere? Well, I kept getting that nudge. As I looked her up, I started looking at her beautiful children who have grown so much. Seeing her oldest be baptized warmed my heart and brought instantly the biggest smile to my face. And I was thinking I was just there to look at the growth of her kids. But as I scrolled, I saw that she now has her own blog. Something said, there, this is it. So I clicked the link to her blog and step out of the waves was why I was led to search for her. It was what I've been struggling with, what I've been going to God with. As I read it, tears started to fall. This is what I needed at this very moment. God, I thank you for always giving me what I need when I need it. If you guys get a chance, check out this blog. It's beautifully written. I was blown away by that and in tears, of course. That wasn't by coincidence that any of that happened. Only God could have orchestrated that. And talking back and forth later this evening, she shared some of her struggle that she has been facing this year and how she had to learn to rely on God in a whole new way in the face of heartbreaking loss, grief, pain, depression. I can see why she would have connected with my writing because that is my heart. That is why I write. I'm so thankful my writing was a blessing to her and that God put me on her heart, but I can't stop thinking, who am I? Who am I that God would use me like that? That the God of creation, this huge, powerful God, would take the time to speak my name. My name. It doesn't even seem possible. And that he would speak my name to someone I haven't spoken to in over four years. That he would draw her in to find something that I had written two or three months ago because she needed to read it today. It's awesome and humbling all at the same time. As I'm reading back over these journal entries, I can't help but wonder where I'm at in the line of faith. I question constantly why I even bother sharing my thoughts and writing these blogs, because why would anyone care what I have to say? But I keep telling myself I only have one light, and God has asked me to shine it here, in this place, in this way. He's not asking me to figure out who needs to read it or how to get it from here to there. He's just asking me to be willing to speak what's on my mind and in my heart, trusting that he will use it how he wants, where he wants, when he wants. I believed, therefore I have spoken. Whew, so that is my blog for today. And um, even as I'm rereading it, it does feel very, um, I mean, it's like I said, it was, you know, two journal entries that, I feel like um, or we're very closely connected because um, this idea of you know where am I where am I at in this line of faith and how is God using me in other people's lives to draw him to himself and um, in the situation of you know reconnecting with my old co-worker she is um, are you know already a Christian and but how do I know if I hadn't written that blog, let's say, and it hadn't been there to encourage her on the day that she needed, you know, how do I know what, what the outcome might have been? Um, you know, we won't know a lot of those things until we get to heaven, you know, how deeply we've impacted people. But it definitely um, helps me remember that when God puts something on my heart, even if it doesn't make sense, I mean, all of the things that I write are things that, that I have learned and that God has used 
um, to do something in me. But even when it doesn't make sense to me, like this particular blog that I read today, just putting these two journals that I wrote, um, just putting them out there, like that seemed to me, and even, like I said, even reading it over just now, um, you know, it can kind of seem, in my mind, a little bit disconnected, but um, I don't know how God is going to use the things that I write and um, or the things that I share, the videos that I make, um, and that's not for me to really worry about. Um, like I wrote at the end of this blog, all God asks is for me to be willing, and he can do the rest. And so that is... Um, that is still something that is hard for me because I want to be in control and I want to have a guaranteed outcome on something and I want to know that uh, it's going to give me the results that I'm looking for um, to help me feel better about myself or to validate me or, you know, gain approval or to be impressive, you know, all of those things that in our, in our natural state, that's, that's what we want. Um, but I think for me, God is using this process of surrendering the things that I've written and the things that I share to loosen my grip on those and to just trust him to do, you know, whatever he wants to do with these things and to be the one, um, you know, he's the one that validates me and accepts me. And it's because of, you know, his love for me that I have value and I have worth. And it's it's not in any of, of these things that we do. Um, or in any of the, you know, ways that people respond to us or give us feedback. Um, and so that, I think, is helping me really be able to just be, you know, wherever God wants me to be in this line of faith, um, however he wants to use me, whether I know I'm being used or not, um, it's really helping me to just be more, more surrendered to that. Um, and, you know, it's helping me, like with these videos, it's helping me step out of my comfort zone and do things that I, you know, previously would have or actually not would have, but previously did say no to. Um, but if God wants to use them, then he's going to use them. I just have to, you know, be willing and, and put the put my effort in. So that is what I had to share for today. Um, and I would just encourage you to, you know, do the same, whatever that looks like in your life. Um especially if it's something that you feel like God is nudging you towards that you've just been like, no, I can't, you know, I'm not really going to be good at that. Or, you know, what if nobody likes it? What if, you know, all the what ifs that we go through. Um, but I would just encourage you to set those things aside and just, you know, do one thing. Um, you know, for me, it was, it started out with posting my, my written blogs. And so I just said, okay, I'm just going to post this one. And we'll see what happens. And um, and now with the videos, um, you know, you just do what you can do and leave the rest up to God. And if nobody likes it, then, you know, that doesn't really have any, um, that doesn't really reflect on who you are as a person. Because um, you're made in the image of God, regardless of if anybody likes you or likes what you can create or produce or, you know, what you can put out there. Um, you have value and you have worth outside of, you know, anything that you can offer to anybody else. Um, you have value and you have worth just because you're you. And um, so I would just encourage you to, you know, and if, if you don't have anything that you feel like God is nudging you on, then just ask him, you know, how do you want to use me? What... Where am I gifted at? What can I do to um, shine your light in someone else's life? And um, one of the psalm blogs that I shared a couple weeks ago 
said it was about shining together that when one person's light shines you know it can definitely eliminate um, the shadows and push back darkness but when we shine together um, the amount of darkness that is um, pushed back I can't think of another word besides push back but um, the amount of darkness that we can um, get rid of and maybe not get rid of that that might not be <laughs> the right representation but um, the amount of darkness that we can push back when we shine together is is pretty amazing and when we surrender our gifts and our our resources and our talents and our time and all those things when we surrender those to God and just say it's yours do what you want with it um, you know a lot can a lot of good can come from that so that's my encouragement for today um, and I do hope you know that it was encouraging or helpful to you and um, if you need someone to talk to or to pray with you definitely reach out um, and ask you know, ask for prayer, ask for someone to talk with you if you are struggling uh, because, you know, whatever you're facing, you don't have to go through it alone. And um, I will be back tomorrow. I'm going to read uh, my blog called Courage to Serve, and it's actually a blog that I wrote um, two years ago for Veterans Day. And... Um, so that just seems to be, you know, where we're at in the, I think we're up to November of 2018. So that's just where we're at in the, in the order of the blogs that I've written. Um, so that will be tomorrow. And I hope everybody has a good rest of their Saturday. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.